In the last decade, more than 600 deaths were due to heat-induced heart problems across the country. Dr. Columbus Batiste, the Regional Chief of Cardiology for Kaiser Permanente Southern California, is joining us this morning to talk about this more. Doctor, thank you so much for joining us. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Good morning. Yes, one of the biggest stories, of course, this week was Bronnie James suffering from cardiac arrest. Of course, there's still so much we don't know about his case, but it shows how prevalent heart issues are. So what are some of the signs and symptoms of cardiovascular issues that we should be looking for when it's this hot? Yeah, you know, I think when we look for excessive sweating, we look for the traditional symptoms of heart disease. So paying attention to your body is so key. Looking for chest pain, for shortness of breath, because these things become exacerbated during these times of excessive heat. You know, I think when some people start to feel some of those symptoms, uh, they're like, oh, you know, it's nothing, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, it'll be okay. But as soon as you feel those symptoms, what is the first thing you should do? Well, the first thing you should do is you need to go to a cool space. And that can be hard depending on where you live in these microclimates in California, but go to a cool space and air condition, remove some of the loose clothes, put a cool towel on your head, mm -hmm. and then maybe even uh, and then drink some water or some of the things that you need to do. And then we know that air pollution can make things even worse during these extreme temperatures. How can this affect people as well? Well, we know that with every one degree Celsius increase, or we call it 33 degrees Fahrenheit for us, uh, increase in temperature, there's a rise of nearly 4% increased risk of cardiovascular deaths. But when you add to that for the pollution, you increase it by up to 7% and 13% at some of the highest levels of pollution. So it ends up being a tag team effect with these things. Dr. Batiste, I want to ask you, uh, you yourself as a doctor, uh, how many patients are you seeing? Are you seeing more patients coming in to the hospital for heat-related illnesses? You know, it, it varies. So at that time, that's one of the questions that we've begun to ask, especially inside the Inland Empire, is to really kind of find out what their habits have been like. And part of it is amplified by their medication. So some patients are on medications that cause them to lose fluids. Others are on medications that may prevent them from sweating, allowing their body's natural process from releasing the heat. And so these are the things that come in, into play. And so that's why it's so important getting with your healthcare professional to make a plan during these massive moments of heat wave. Yeah, and we definitely have more high temps this weekend and for the foreseeable future. Dr. Baptiste, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you. And you can find all the information for this segment on our website, kcalnews.com slash seen on TV. Good information. There. Yeah.